Hello, my name is Edwin. I live in Polk County, North Carolina with Katrina, my wife, and um, I want to tell you a story about bees, honeybees. And this video is um, aimed at showing you how I was able to catch a wild swarm of honeybees. This is the fourth wild swarm I've caught. I caught three last year in some bait boxes, but this is the first one I've caught where the bees are hanging off a tree. Um, and this is a swarm of honeybees, and you can see the clumps of bees clinging to one another, falling into the box I put underneath them. Um, Probably the scent of the queen was still on uh, the chestnut leaves. So some of the bees would continue to fly back to the location where they believed their queen was located. But most probably she, the queen, fell into my box there. And uh, is that's why most of the bees are content to stay in there because they all want to be near the queen. And here I'm just clipping the leaves that had that, maybe the scent, and um, trying to get them to, this rest of the bees to stay there. But, <clears throat> so why do bees swarm? Have you ever wondered about that? And when bees swarm, what's the story? What's going on there? Well, bees, when they're in a um, box, so let's say they're in a, a box of um, beehive box that somebody had made and their population is growing well at some point they'll become overcrowded in the box or they'll sense that they're overcrowded or maybe there's something wrong in the box maybe there's a pest or maybe there's an accumulation of um, pesticides in their wax but for whatever reason the bees decide that are located in that hive body that it's time to expand their colony um, and they leave. Usually when bees in a natural and a good situation are expanding, what, they do, what they'll do is um, simply uh, the queen that's in the box will leave with about two-thirds of the bees. She and the other bees will leave behind a full brood chamber with baby bees in their uh, larva states growing and nurse bees as well as a full supply of honey for the, when the baby bees are born. But the queen who is already had been fertilized and is laying eggs will fly away with the other bees, the two-thirds of the bees. And so that's what we're seeing here is probably uh, an existing queen in another hive, or maybe one of mine, I'm not sure. I have two other hives now. So she flew away and they landed in this chestnut tree looking for a new home. And uh, they were sending out scouts to scout around while the bees loitered on the chestnut tree until I came along and captured them, shook them down into this box and hopefully provided them a new home where they will grow and thrive. Um, this will be um, the third of my um, hives now on our property. Oh, just one other thing. Um, Katrina shot this video and she is so brave. She wasn't wearing a bee suit or anything. She just, when necessary, comes and puts the camera right into the bees and um, shoots, her, shoots some good film. So that was really cool. And she also made several good suggestions like clipping off the leaves where the bees were going. So I appreciate that, and I'm so happy that we were able to do this together. It was really fun. So what, what about the old hive? Well, in the old hive, the baby bees that are in there will, can, will raise up some new queens called virgin queens by feeding them royal jelly. And those virgin queens will then go, there would be maybe 10, 12 of them, and they will go out and fly on a mating flight. And as they fly, the bee 
these swirl around the queen, protecting her from a bird and trying to create a screen. And she flies high into the sun. Meanwhile, drone bees have, a, somehow bees just know where the flights are going to be. And drone bees from other hives have gathered where the queen, the virgin queen, will fly into the sun. And as she flies higher and higher, the strongest drones chase after her and mate with her. And she will mate maybe 15 times with different drones that die and fall off. Um, and then she'll return to her hive with a full supply of fertilization of different genetics from different drones. And she will then begin laying eggs. And that queen will never mate again. This will be her only her only uh, mating opportunity when she goes on that mating flight. And that's what's happening in the old hive. But I'm now looking at the new hive, or the, the hive we caught with the probably an existing queen who's fertile. And with her entourage of maiden bees and um, that she's brought with her. <clears throat> now you can see I'm arranging my bars. I use vertical top bars. The, um, I had a couple frames in this, but mostly they're just top bars I put in there. And I'm using these vertical top bars based uh, loosely based on a, a French monk from, I don't even know, like 1600s, who designed something called the People's Hive. And in his concept, the bees would um, be placed in these boxes with vertical top bars. They will make their own wax and hopefully it'll follow the pattern of the uh, bars that we've put in there. And uh, as time goes by, um, you add boxes to the bottom instead of the top. And that way you cycle through your wax and also um, and you move, move it up, up every time the bees are expanding uh, and getting full, I'll put another box underneath the bottom and lift it. The beehives in the foreground you see here, they have three boxes. Um, this hive, this new hive, will start with just two. It's May now in North Carolina. So they'll have a full summer and fall of pollen and nectar gathering to grow this new um, beehive and hopefully thrive in their new location. And uh, naturally, the bees, tip, they tend, in a, like in a tree, if they were in a hollow tree, the bees would uh, build their, their honeycomb downward. And by lifting the, um, the hive and putting a new box underneath, you kind of create a perpetual tree situation. That's what uh, the monk Wari designed. And um, I made several trips to this chestnut tree periodically to gather more bees that were on the leaves there, brought them back to their hopeful new home, and dumped them into the box. And then I put the top bars on and closed it up. I've um, got it closed up now, and I think it's pretty well weather protected. And I think we will have a third beehive here. But this Warre style, what I'm doing here is I'm using um, medium Langstroth boxes, which are a conventional, most common type of box with eight frames. And uh, they make them as many as ten, but eight frames is lighter, so when you have to pick up two full boxes, like I probably will, it's... Um, it's easier to pick them up when they're smaller boxes. The actual War A style beehives are even smaller than these medium eight frame Langstroth boxes. And I think for my future bee uh, keeping hive bodies, I'm going to try to build all my um, hive boxes to the dimensions that the Monk War A specialists. Uh, specified. Okay, and uh, here are the top bars I have them putting on. They all have um, 
a little triangular piece. Um, I got these from a company called um, B Thinking, which make a Wari style uh, beekeeping equipment. I'm wearing something I got from Brushy Mountain Bees, which is a North Carolina company. Um, probably didn't need to wear it, but I'm still a new beekeeper and I'm a little paranoid. I'm not like one of those bee whisperers yet. Um, but I do think it's important when you're working with bees to um, keep a confidence. Don't be fearful. Even if the bees sting you, it might hurt, but bee stings are also medicinal in a way. They'll, they, they, people get stung on purpose when they're getting treatment sometimes. So it's not all bad when they sting you, um, besides the pain and everything. Here you see I'm spreading the top bars out so they'll be nice and even for when they build their comb, hopefully, and load it up with honey which I'll possibly get in about one year's time, maybe 14 months from now, which is May 2015. Okay, I'm back on my porch now after that adventure. It's quite an adrenaline rush to capture a wild swarm of bees, but it's not really um, dangerous because they're in a very docile state and I, none of them stung me or even came close to stinging me uh, and I'm happy I was able to put them in there and let's hope they adopt their hive. <laughs>